I'm going to answer another question here, and I've got to read this one to you. It's a long question, but I've been, I haven't answered this one in ages, so um, let me read this one to you. I've been running a business since 2004 and have grown every year. We will hit 500 grand in revenue this season, and each winter I reflect on the past few years and plan for changes and new plans for the upcoming season. One of the issues I ran into this year for the first time was a lack of employees. I pay better than or as good as anyone in the industry in our area. But when it comes to retaining long-term people, I'm reading from my phone here, so forgive me for uh, this. It got a little bit more to go here. But basically, uh, he's saying uh, when it comes to retaining long-term people who may, uh, who may see this work as their carrier, I'm afraid I am coming up short. So far, I have been lucky. My first hire was a 15-year-old kid, and he was now he, and he's now 25 and still working full time. He will find a job in his area of interest soon, and so that'll mean a transition, meaning that he won't be working for the fellows asking the question. I've been adamant about not offering health care plans. For one, uh, when they increase in price, the employee isn't thankful for the raise. Second, I think businesses offering health care plans contribute to the problem of people disconnected with the true cost of health care and unwilling to negotiate uh, or seek out better options at lower costs like a free market should function. That being said, finding and keeping long-term employees is going to be very important moving forward. I'm open to just about anything that will fit within my ability to still make a good ROI per job. You've dealt with these issues, and I'd covet the opportunity to hear how uh, you've worked through this and structured your total compensation. So I wanted to read the whole question because there's several layers to this question. And, geez, I hope I can remember the whole thing. So I may have to look at it again here. Let me start with the part that, like, resonated with me first. Um, healthcare. Boy, I couldn't agree more that a big part of our problem in the United States is the fact that the individuals that we employ, that we buy healthcare for, haven't the faintest freaking idea what that costs, nor do they have the faintest freaking idea what it costs to go buy a prescription and what the health insurance companies are being billed. And, you know, they're watching the ads. This is my rant. They're watching the ads on TV for the little whatever colored pill. And then they're saying, hey, I got to have that thing. And that thing's costing 200 bucks behind the scenes. It, it is just a giant disaster, in my opinion. So I agree. Totally agree. Couldn't agree more. The problem is that um, you might feel strongly on that position, but what are you going to do if you want to compete? I mean, I, I give you a case in point, Service Autopilot. We have 45, 46 employees here um, at this exact moment. I couldn't imagine if we didn't offer them health insurance. I mean, I, we wouldn't even be competitive. We've got some very expensive, very talented people that could go work elsewhere. And if we didn't offer them health insurance because of my agreement that, you know what, if I offer health insurance, I'm perpetuating the problem, well, then I wouldn't have the level of people that we have. I would just be out of luck. And so, yeah, I agree. But at the same time, I have to play the game. And I think you sort of have to play the game. And you, you fight the problem from a different angle. So one way you could fight the health insurance problem, and it just doesn't solve it, is if you're, and you won't be doing this in your business, but you know, if I'm paying full health insurance for a family at my company, Service Autopilot in this case, 1700 bucks a month. And so and that's if they're not too old. I mean, that's if they're like my age. And so they're not very, I mean, I'm getting older, but they're not that old. Um, so, you know, family of, uh, family in their late 30s, 40 years old, that kind of range with two kids, 1700 1800 bucks a month. So one way you can demonstrate that to them is when you lay out their compensation package. And again, you're right. They won't appreciate or under, not because they're selfish, just they don't understand. They haven't been educated that you're actually paying them their salary of, let's call it 65000 a year plus $1,700 a month, plus you're paying the, you know dental insurance, plus you're paying vision, plus you're paying bonuses, plus you're paying training, plus you're, you can go down that list. Well, the approach that some companies have taken is they literally itemize all that stuff out. You can have that stuff itemized out on their payroll statement so it prints out on their payroll stub. You can lay that out to them every year in their compensation or every six months and remind them, here's all the things we're paying for. Yes, you make 65000 but to the company with labor burden, with, with all these other 
expenses, you're costing our company $89,000 a year. If you were to strike out on your own and go out and you know, on your own in business, you would basically to, to get back to where you are currently today working with me, you'd have to make $89,000 a year. And so you can actually lay some of that out. I think that you have to play the insurance game in certain businesses when you get to a certain size. No way around it because you just simply won't win the game. Other companies will do it. You can, anyway, so I'm going to leave the insurance topic alone. That's my argument on that. I don't see any way around that completely. So what I believe you're looking for inside your business is you want to be the comp to, it also, we're in lawn care, pest control, these different industries. The, the reality of it is that we are fighting for our lives to hire people because most people are wanting to move up the ladder and move into other jobs. Um, the reality is that we do tend to pay a lot of, we, we might pay more money than an office job, but some people just simply don't want to be out in the, in the heat or out in the cold these days. So we're fighting that. There's a lot of challenges we're fighting. We're also fighting the stigma of a dad says to his kid, hey, I don't want you to work at a lawn care company or a pest control company. Go get a computer degree. Go do this. Go do that. Because they don't understand that you like being in the lawn care industry or the pest control industry is like super respectable and there's a lot of skill and knowledge and talent that goes into this thing. So there's that social pressure as well. We're fighting all of those things. And so the way you counteract that is you become the company that when needed pays health insurance. You become the company that finds creative ways to be able to pay more. That means you have to be one of the higher, not highest, but one of the higher priced companies in your market so that you can afford the best people. It means that you find ways to, again, because you're not the cheapest provider in the market, to have the money to train, to do the special little things for the team, to surprise the team with things, to bring food in, to do company lunches. Just, it doesn't have to be super expensive, but what are all those little insignificant things that you could do that aren't that expensive? Could you Instead of giving a team member an $800 raise, could you surprise them with a gift to you know, go on a trip that you've heard them talking about for three years or help them put a down payment on a car that you know that they need? Some of those things are almost more valuable than just throwing a little bit more money at them. So my personal opinion is you want to be the employer that people want to work for. One, because you legitimately care. Like you really want them to do well. And then you look for ways to help them and then you look for ways for your company to become more profitable and charge a little bit higher rates so that you can pass some of that money back on to them. You know, at our company, my attitude isn't, I want to make more profit. I want to keep our margins really strong and I want to grow our margins. But at the same time, if we can make more money that can filter down to our team, all the better because hopefully that team will stay with us longer. And if they stay with us longer, we're a better company because turnover is expensive and the knowledge suck out of your business when you learn people is painful. So if I can keep the team longer, great. So I don't necessarily need to be greedy for an extra point or two in margin. I'd rather push some of that money down to the team so that they are more likely to stay with me. That doesn't mean it has to always be in pay. Again, it can be in perks, little extra things, training. I mean, a lot of people want to grow in their positions. The other simple argument I'd have for if you want to retain people, you've got to grow the company. You've got to build a company. If your company is going to hit 500, 700, 800,000, it's going to sort of stall or it's going to go from 500, 800,000 over five, six years. There's no real growth opportunity at that company. People want to work for the successful, growing company with opportunity. They want to feel like they're part of something. They want to feel like they're part of something going bigger. They want to feel like they're part of something doing good. Does your team know that what you do is really valuable? We're like, we're just, it's, we do something greater than just mowing lawns or killing bugs or cleaning the pool. Like, there's actually more value than that to, our, to what we're doing. We are taking things off of our clients' plates so that they can have time with their families, so that they can go on vacation, so that they can focus on whatever the great thing. Maybe one of your clients does something really important in healthcare or business or medical field. Every minute you free up of theirs to spend more time with their family or work in their profession that helps other people is really valuable. What we're doing is actually really important and the team needs to understand that. And I think a team that believes that what they're doing is of value and sees that 
and we have to tell them and show them that it truly is, we're not just making this up, then they're more likely to stick around. They're more likely to put value in the profession that they've chosen to be part of, but then you've got to give them growth opportunity. And you've got to find ways to pay them more and give them more perks and take good care of them and be that great boss. That doesn't mean the guy that's a, that rolls over and, do, and like takes whatever from the team, uh, but the person that is legitimately good to them and, and firm when necessary. So I hope that helps. Find all those little perks that you can pass their way, bonuses, whatever. And, uh, and try that because that's what I found has worked for me. There's no single magic bullet. It's a combination of tons of little things. And at the end of the day, a lot of it's just about being a company that they want to work for. And what does that mean in your market?